Hey guys, what's up? Evan from Stock Music Musician, and today I want to do an introductory video on what CV voltage is in Reason and on what it controls um, and sort of how to use it. This is going to be a high level video. Uh, it's not going to get di dig super deep into it. This is part of my whole series on getting started with Reason. You'll see a playlist. It's all included together. If you're getting started with Reason, please just go through the playlist. There'll be all sorts of useful information. Um, I've also got a lot more advanced tutorials, um, which you can find here on YouTube, and my most detailed tutorials and like project files and stuff are available for download through my Patreon channel, uh, which really helps support the channel and also helps um, sort of offset the cost of making these videos. So let's jump into CV voltage. So right now I've got a subtractor in Reason, which is like a monophonic, well it's a polyphonic, but I usually use it just as a monophonic bass synth and there's a bass sound set up right now. And then it's going into a Scream 4 distortion. Um, and so right now it's just being controlled by the keyboard. Um, and so what I wanna do is create a pattern sequencer and not control it with a keyboard, but instead control it with a programmer. And the default one in Reason is called, <laughs> it's called the Matrix. Uh, had a brain fart there. And the Matrix is a utility. Now I just made a video about the difference between utilities, effects, players, and all that in Reason. So you can go check that out. Um, it should be in the playlist and I'll try and create a link to that as well. But here you see um, it automatically created an output from the gate and an output from the notes section of the matrix and put them into the sequencer control section of subtractor. And so basically CV cables as opposed to audio cables, CV stands for control voltage and CV cables basically send data. Audio, audio cables theoretically send sound, although it's obviously all just ones and zeros in reason. Um, but basically the signal that a CV voltage will send can be basically kind of plus or minus, I think 127 is the range in reason and everything in between. And it sends that a number over time. So that number changes. Um, and a good way of visualizing that would be to open another U uh, player the Pulsar Dual LFO, which is a great one. And here you can see, basically, this would be one way of sending CV voltage in that shape, and it throbs at that pace. So it's 0, 127, 0, 127, and all the steps in between. Or for certain other shapes, it would be 127, 0. 127, 0. Um, and so you can use that to modulate sounds. So right now, the way we've got it set up is that the note information, which is, you can see a little vertical keyboard here, is controlling the CV section here in the subtractor, which is basically just the note section. And the gate section is controlling the gate section of the subtractor. And the gate in um, the matrix, I don't know why I keep on forgetting its name, is velocity, basically, how loud or whether or not a sound is on. So let's hit run, and you'll hear it's just going to be hitting a C, basically, almost at a steady volume. Now, if we cut out every third, for example, um, We'll just, we're just making up a rhythm. I don't know what this is going to sound like, but. Um, all right, so now you'll hear that I've only affected the gates. So um, some of these are louder. Some of these aren't playing at all. So you'll notice there's a rhythm now. Okay, now let's go to the note side of things. And since we want this to be more of a bassy sound, see, see, play, work. Um, okay, so we'll just. Again, don't know what I'm playing, but just inserting different note information. So now, now that I've changed the note output, so you got sort of an acid um, 
and then you've got the option to switch from the key section to the curve section. And here you can draw in basically your own custom version of an LFO type shape. Um, there's a million ways to do to get these shapes in reason. Um, but what we're going to do then is take the curve from here and put it, this is just so it can be super easy to hear. We're going to put it on the distortion. So as these numbers get bigger, more distortion will be added. one way of using the CV um, Now, instead of distortion, so now let's say we're going to put on one of those filters here. The resonance. So we've got some modulation going on, but if you really want a crazy far out organic sound, let's get several different parameters being automated. So I'm going to use this LFO one from the Pulsar going out and you're going to control parameter one of the distortion. So now let's see what that adds to the mix. And I don't really know. We're just experimenting, but... So you can hear that this is um, moving. As this moves up, you're getting more and more of this amount, which and now let's see. And we'll turn on this one here, just so it's really obvious. And it's basically going up and down pretty fast. And what we'll do is control um, the mod wheel. That should be pretty noticeable. Now the secret to this is doing a lot of stuff subtly, but where's the fun in that? Um, so. Okay, so now, um, the other thing you have to realize is that some CVs are not, um, are sort of not dynamically generated, but instead they're being, or are dynamically generated, instead of being generated by some preset, um, basically some preset LFO, which is going at a regular predictable pace. Instead, um, for example, um, I believe the auto CV section from the screen is coming out in response to one of the envelope, basically an envelope in it, which means when a certain threshold is crossed, information comes out. So if we put this to filter one frequency, let's see what happens now. So there you have it. In a nutshell, that was not a good sounding explanation of how to use CV voltage, but that is a very accurate explanation of how you approach it. Basically, you figure out what parameter do you want to change, and then how do you want to change it? You could automate it, but often you want several things being controlled all at once. And this is a great way of having 
one central control source. If you look here, there's actually four different CV outs for the LFOs, um, for each LFO. So you could hook up um, several different things to all be um, all be in sync, basically. So they'd all be controlled by the same output. Um, and then from there, if you need even more outputs, you can use another utility called the Spider CV Merger, which basically allows you to take one, it's not very clear over there, but um, to take one CV signal and split it into four, or well, split it into three, and then it's inverse signal, or to take four CV signals and merge them into one. Um, so, um, let's say you want to take the inverse of the CV signal, so when the LFO goes up, the parameter goes down, um, well, you can do that too. So now let's hear what it sounds like. Isn't that amazing? Now the last thing I want to show you here is just that CV is really only limited by your imagination because this is also a great way of doing side chain type effects. Um, and probably the most powerful way of doing CV in Reason, um, and this is not, I'm not trying to be comprehensive here, but if you want the most control, then you're going to want to go to, sorry, it's an effect. Um, you're going to want to use the synchronous effect modulator, which basically will reset the device. Basically, this is a grid that allows you to draw very detailed CV paths, modulation paths. And you can have these control effects, or you can actually have these be a CV out. Um, so let's disconnect everything. Well, not that one. That's the one thing we didn't want to disconnect. Um, the rest of these. So now, um, what we'll just do is we'll do the filter resonance. And what you'll see is it should follow this weird shape here. <laughs> And that might be a bit hard to hear, so let's do it on something that's even, or filter one frequency will be easier to hear. Okay, that's not that easy to hear. We'll do it on. So there.